Okay, let's do a quick review of the render view, render settings, and mental ray in Maya. Here we have a sphere in the viewport, and if we want to see what this looks like after being rendered, we can do that by using the render view. Um, this icon right up here is one way that we can open the render view panel. And as soon as we do that, this render view panel opens up and we can see a rendered version of our sphere. Another way that you can access the render view is by going up to Window, Rendering Editors, and Render View. And when we look at our render view, we have some icons up here. Um, this first one will uh, redo a render. So if we zoom in, on our sphere and then hit this redo, you'll see it updates. Um, we also have an option for render settings. And in our render settings, we're rendering using the Maya software right now. Um, I don't recommend using the Maya software. There is another rendering solution in Maya that we will be using, but for right now, I'm just going to go through the common attributes in the render settings. These common attributes are going to be the same in any render that you use in Maya. Here we have our file output and you can change the name of your rendered file. You can change the image format. Either use JPEG or PSD, EPS, TIFF. So you have a, a wide variety of different formats that you can use. This one over here, frame animation, um, is for if you are um, rendering a single frame, which is it's set up for right now, or if you're going to re render an animation, which we won't be going into. So you can just leave this as single frame. Frame range is for setting up animations. We can leave that alone. Renderable cameras, this is where you determine which camera Maya's render will process through, and it's set up for the perspective camera right now. But if we crack this open, we can see we have options. If we had any other cameras available, um, they would be listed in here. But right now we have our four standard ones, their perspective, the front, the side, and the top. And any one of these can be um, set up to render. And then down at the bottom, we have our image size, which we can change the size uh, that Maya will render. Right now it's set for 640 by 480, but we can use any one of these presets. If you scroll down to the bottom, um, you can see we start getting some print uh, presets. So if we select letter, you can see that we have a width of 2550 and a height of 3300, um, but that's because our size units are set at pixels. So we can come in here and even change this to inches, and you see it changes to 8.5 by 11, which is a letter size sheet of paper. And our resolution, this is really nice because it, it gives you the ability to um, adjust the resolution of your image rather than calculating it out ahead of time. The resolution would be in pixels for this size. Maya gives you the ability to just change the resolution. And if you would like to, you can always come in here and custom, set up a custom um, image size. So we can change this to 864 by 486 if we want to. And I'll change this to 72 because it would just be working in the screen resolution. So uh, these are the um, standard and common render settings that you'll find in any rend renderer. So let's close this and let's do a re-render. And let's just expand this a little bit because I changed the render size. So you can see now we're rendering a bigger image because I changed the render size from 640 by 480 to 864 by 486. It's just a larger size. One thing that you notice when I do render this sphere in my render view is that in the viewport it looks perfectly smooth because I've used the uh, subdivision surfaces uh, by hitting the three on the keypad. 
um, but it's not being reflected in our render view. And you may be saying, well, why is that happening? And that's because we're using the Maya software renderer. And the Maya software renderer does not recognize the subdivision surfaces. So in order to get our nice smooth object like this rendered, we would need to use a different render solution in Maya. That renderer is called Mental Ray. And if uh, we look over here in our menu bar for the render view, you can see we have a drop down menu for selecting different renderers that are available to us. So if we crack this open, you can see we have Maya Software, Maya Hardware, Hardware 2, Maya Vector, but there's no Mental Ray. This may happen on your machine if you may not have access to Mental Ray. If this happens, I will show you how to get Mental Ray on your machine. Maya treats Mental Ray as a plugin and it ships with it, but sometimes it's not turned on automatically. So you would need to just go to your plugin manager and know which of the plugins to turn on and you will have access to Mental Ray. To get to the Plugin Manager, you need to go to Window, Settings and Preferences, and then down at the bottom you can see we have Plugin Manager. Now we have a big list of all these different plugins that are available to turn on and off in Maya. And the layout may be different from what I have here, but you can see down toward the bottom I have something called the Maya 2MR. That Maybe listed up here, maybe listed down here. Look and find the Maya to MR plugin and click Loaded. Loaded means it will load it in the session that you're in right now. It'll load it in your file and you will be able to use it right now. Auto load means if you shut Maya down, the next time you start Maya up, it will load Mental Ray. Always check both of those with Mental Ray. And if for whatever reason you go to a computer and Mental Ray is not available, then this is the place that you need to go. Window, Settings and Preferences, and then the Plugin Manager. Find Maya 2 MR and turn it all on. And you can hit Close. And now in our render view, let's come over and let's switch to Mental Ray and let's hit our Redo Previous Render and you can see now we have a nice beautifully smoothed sphere like we have in our viewport right here. I could show you another um, one of the buttons that we have in our toolbar up here and uh, this one is uh, the Keep Image and if you click this you can see now we have a slider down at the bottom and we can slide back and forth and we don't see any difference because we've just started keeping this image. So what I can do is change the view a little bit and let's do another re-render. And now you can see that this is our current render and if we slide the slider over now we have access to the render we just had saved. And you can go back and forth. And this is helpful when you're doing work with lighting, when you're doing work with materials um, and camera angles, you can get a sense of um, what's working better in the scene. If you would like to get rid of one of the stills, then um, say for instance this one, we would like to keep the one that we just rendered. All you have to do is click on this button, Remove Image, and it will remove that image. And the only one we're left is the render that we just rendered. So if I open up the Render Settings again, this is the Render Settings button. And you can access it from here, from the Render View. Or if you're in Maya, you can see we have this button right here also. So now that we switched over to the Mental Ray Renderer, you can see we have a lot of a lot more different tabs. We still have our common, which looks exactly the same as it did before. But we have passes, features, quality, indirect lighting, and options. And we're not going to get in much of this right now, but I do want to show you uh, the quality tab. So we have different quality presets. Uh, we have draft, and then if we crack this open, 
you can see we have lots of different options here. Now draft is the lowest end of the presets. This will give you a very quick render, but it won't necessarily be the highest quality. Um, an intermediate quality level you will get with preview. And then if you want high quality finished renders, then you can switch over to production. So let me just do a little test here on draft. Let's zoom in. Really close. And I'll do a render. And you can see how we have some stair stepping around the surface of our sphere. That is the low anti-aliasing um, settings on the draft preset. So if we switch this, oh, actually, let me save this image so we can compare it with the one we're going to render now. Uh, let's switch over to production. And don't worry about all these other things. There's, there are three um, presets with standard names, just production, just preview and just draft. I would stick with those three for now. So let's switch to production. And then let's re-render this. And now you can see we have a much smoother edge of our sphere. If we go back and forth, and if you look in this area, you can see a lot of stair-stepping now, and it gets resolved, disappears when we switch to the production. And that is an intro to the render view, the render settings, and mental ray.